All right, so I have this Julie watermelon that I got from the farmer's market a few weeks ago. I have not eaten it because the other one I tried was not very good. So I'm just going to turn this banana patch into a temporary watermelon patch because these bananas are going to take a lot of time to fill out anyways. So here's what I'm gonna do with the watermelon. I already tried throwing it on the ground and it did not break. So let's stab it a little bit. go. Now I'm just going to throw the pieces around and then bury them. Here we are. We have the watermelon pieces over there, over there. I'm not really going to do anything other than just cover them up in wood chips. All right, so we're just going to do a really quick plant walk through just to do a little update, show you what I've got growing on. Over here we have this mulberry. This is a seedling that I dug up from Century, Florida, which is like an hour, an hour and a half from here. And uh, I'm still debating topping it or not, but it'd be kind of cool to have a mulberry that's leaned over like this. You could just pick the berries right off of it. Over here I have my little mango nursery. Picked these up from uh, the West Palm Beach area. We got Pina Colada, Nam Doc Mai, there's a Julie hidden somewhere, and definitely coconut cream. Here I have this banana. This is an ice cream banana gifted from Terry Mir, my permaculture designer teacher. Over here, the low quad is awesome. I really should take some cuttings from that and sell the cuttings, $5 a pop. This is a persimmon tree my mother put in years ago. I don't know what's wrong with it, but it seems to be happy so far. It has not really grown, but uh, yeah, it's there. My yellow coconut that I planted, it is finally pushing out a new leaf here. So that's good. Over here we have a fig tree. It's loving all this mulch we've got. This is a tibicina. I think this is grandifolia, also known as the princess flower or glory bush. Makes a purple flower. Good for attracting pollinators. Here we have this coon tea. I don't know why it's doing this, but it looks alive. So I'm just gonna keep it there. It's probably just sunburnt a little bit. It was in the shade for a minute. Behind me, we have this blueberry patch. These are the blueberries tomatoes from Wild Boar Farms. No tomatoes yet, tons of flowers. I'm pretty sure there are some tomato hornworms up in here, because I saw one on another plant. I was thinking about leaving it because we do have a large wasp type of uh, bugs around. But I might just pull it off when I show you guys. Here we have the dwarf Namwa banana. Here's a little bit of transplant shock. That's fine. That's expected. I just need to trim those off. But it's uh, pushing out this new leaf. So it's happy. Here I have a Kunti palm. I believe this one is a uh, Zamia integrifolia. Sometimes it's confused with the Pumilia. Coconuts are still alive. Over here I have some little tomatoes that are still trying their bestest. No idea of what variety they are, but I'm just letting them grow and see what happens. Here I have uh, an Abel Mosius Manny Hot. This is the variegated variety known as Aunt Lily's Pad, I believe. And it's the only one I have, and it's alive, and I love it. Here is a coconut cream mango. I believe it is getting too much nitrogen from this. Well, not just from this. I did put some coffee grounds in it when it was potted up but there's definitely too much nitrogen. It is growing very, very slow. And with all these wood chips here, this will help release some of that nitrogen out of the soil. I did bury some mango seeds here, some mango seeds here, and some rotten tomatoes that I had. But I need to move this uh, sunshine mimosa away. 
and uh, replant it somewhere else that actually needs the nitrogen. Pro tip, don't use any sort of fertilizers or good soil or anything for your mangoes. They do not want it. We got a couple more tomatoes over here. Here is the sweet potato patch. Lots of greens growing on. Lots of salads to be made. Thinking about taking some cuttings and rooting them and selling them. But so far, it's doing pretty well. I have a few of these uh, Abel Mossius Manny Hots. I have four different kinds. This one is the uh, Kiko's Crump, good for lettuce wraps and whatnot. An edible leaf hibiscus. This one's my favorite. It's called Chief Kubo's Pride or Prize. I don't know why it looks like that there. These ones are filling out pretty well. We have this little banana patch here four different kinds of bananas. Recently mulched. So that's gonna be awesome. Here's another view of the sweet potato patch. I do have a African blue basil planted throughout. This is another type of chaya. I really need to separate all those out and repot them or plant them. Here we are facing the east side of the yard Everything is growing out, filling out nicely. Here is another view. I will start my tour over here. Here we have Kenaf, also known, also known as Hibiscus cannabinus. This is an edible leaf hibiscus. Much firmer texture, not as slimy as the Abel Moscus Manny Hot. Here we have the uh, the Florida Queen Peach. I don't know if it's a watering thing or a nitrogen thing, but it is also growing slow. But it's alive, and that's positive. I have a perennial peanut over there, and a sunshine mimosa right here. This is just some chickweed. I've been pulling it out, but I don't really hit on it too much because it is it is an edible crop. Here I have these uh, pigeon peas that I need to plant out. Next to this we've got a towering, uh, what do you call this? Mexican sunflower. What is the botanical name? Tithonia diversifolia. I have a few of these planted throughout the yard. Uh, hidden in the shadows is this uh, butternut, also known as a white walnut. Not sure if this is a nitrogen issue or whatever, but uh, still alive. I should put it in the ground somewhere. <laughs> Over here we have my unplanted sweet almond bush still. I really should just plant it where it is. It'll do great there. But it's flowering and it smells amazing. Let's try walking on this side. So I have four of that four or five different kinds of plants potted in each little section like that's like a section and that's a section and that's a section most of them have the African blue basil planted I do have sunflowers throughout I have roselle different kinds of roselle I have a Thai roselle and then the other basic roselle it's also known as Jamaican sorrel so you can eat this like a salad green I have a moringa here, not really sure why. It's small because I planted it at the same time as the big one. We will, I'll show you that one shortly. These little weeds here just kind of pull things out as I go. I have some multi-headed sunflowers. Oop. And there we go. And I'm just kind of letting them do their thing. I haven't cut off any of the sunflower heads. I'm not trying to save seed, I'm just letting it reseed itself over here i don't know what this is it could be a watermelon it could be a pumpkin but i'm just letting it do letting it do its thing 
I'm not trying to control anything and if I harvest stuff then I harvest stuff. I know this is the uh, those Mexican sour gherkins, the cucamelons. Maybe it's not a Mexican sour gherkin. I do have other kinds of gherkins, a Jamaican gherkin. Not planted yet. I really need to start them. But everything is getting quite large. Um, the sprinkler system we had going went out over a month ago at this point. Mother is trying to fix it, but thank you, wood chips, for keeping my plants all nice and moist. Here's another one of those cucamelons next to a moringa. Hopefully, it won't take it down. Let's separate that. Thank you. Go that way. I do try to um, push them along to go away from some of the plants. So you have another cucamelon coming up through here, which is fine. It's supposed to go up the sunflower, but I haven't been training them at all. The roselle is looking large. There's probably like three or four plants right here, which will be awesome once they start flowering. And they seem really happy, so I'm not I'm not trying to do anything about it. Here we go. It's at least three. One, two, three. Very thick trunk. Here's some watermelon type thing. Let's see if we can find any watermelons. Oh look, there's a little baby one. And this stick indicates that there is a bigger watermelon right here. Look at that guy. There we go. Leather. There we go. Definitely not ready yet. I haven't really... Uh, I kind of look underneath it sometimes to see if it's getting eaten, but it's not. More roselle, more African blue basil. I know I have like a couple watermelons and pumpkins growing throughout. Just kind of letting it all surprise me. Um, let's see if I can get through here. Another watermelon. I believe this is the Saskatchewan watermelon. And it seems like it's not ready yet. Not really sure how to tell. I mean, the little if that's just a leaf or if that's part of it. Nope. There's supposed to be a tendril on the other side, maybe like that. That's supposed to be an indicator of when it's ready, but I'm just gonna kind of wait until this turns brown or whatever and then it'll be super ready. So far those are the only two big ones I have seen. I don't know if something's coming out here and eating the babies. More Mexican sunflower is totally shading over the butternut tree I have planted right next to it. I can't really tell if it's doing good or not, but I mean, it's alive. Essentially, I could just cut it back, but um, maybe I should add some microbes to the soil. This stick is an indicator that there should be a watermelon somewhere. And yeah, I think something's coming through and eating all these little babies. Not really sure what to do about that except pray. I have more sunshine mimosa. Another roselle. One of these is supposed to be a regular roselle. The other one's a Thai roselle. I think one has a yellow flower and the other one will have a white flower. Continuing on to the section, we've got red okra. Um, a couple of them I'm just letting fully ripen and then I can replant them. Because we still have like 120 days or so left of the growing season. This one's got a lot of okra. And some of these are still, even though they're large, they're still soft enough to eat. A lot of stink bugs up in there, whatever you call them. This moringa is getting bigger. All the moringas planted in the ground right now are all the same age, technically. I just don't really know why some are doing better than others. See, here's another one. Maybe yeah, that's how I can tell. The leaves just look way different. This one's skinnier than the other one. Here we have a large cranberry hibiscus plant. No flowers yet. 
we can grow these as annuals here so from seed to flower should only take like I don't know four months three or four months so I could still technically start seeds now harvest seeds before the end of the season here we have a green okra that's being annihilated by ants I'm not sure why they favor this one over others but I just kind of leave it more roselle moringa okra behind me i have the florida king peach this one seems to be doing better it's growing a little bit faster than the queen has more new shoes i really should prune them back might put it into shock a little bit but it'll give it more airflow but i don't know i could just wait until the leaves fall off at the end of the season and shape it at that time of course, I have a Mexican sunflower next to it. You can easily cut these and uh, root them and then have more plants, which I would like to do eventually. Moringa. Not sure what this guy is. I hope whatever you are, you give me lots of fruit. I believe it's a pumpkin. It could be the jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. Pumpkin, so it'll be a very large one. But um, I have moved the... Uh, vine over here because it was about to take out my not like it really matters but this other Mexican sunflower over here but I do have a little little variegated pink lemon here it's doing a lot better now than it was a month ago over here I think this is like a crepe myrtle and below it I had put a bunch of mulch I didn't really push it around so they're just these mounds but all of this uh all this weird stuff started popping up this is called pennywort. It is an edible plant. And it's really the only thing growing out of all this. So I don't stress about it too much. It'll die back in the winter. It is an edible plant. So I can essentially pick a bunch of these and throw it in the salad mixes and people will probably like it. I planted a purple ube over here. Tried using this stick to make it go up the tree, but it just wants to do its own thing. So I'm not really stressed about it too much either. I can essentially take cuttings from these, root them, sell them, make money. All right, heading more back into the middle of the yard. Here I have the Chief Kubo's Pride planted. He goes from here. We have a. Uh, this is the purple giant milkweed. This is perennial to Mexico. Look at that flower. I do have the white one planted on the other side of the yard. I have a little chaya growing right here. Very slow. It probably doesn't like the shade too much. And then I have this uh, katuk. And I didn't realize Katug was more of a shade-loving plant. So I will have to replant that somewhere else next week when I come out here to renovate the yard. I have this sad lemon in a pot, focusing all of its energy. Oh, it's a Meyer lemon. You can easily take these and just cook with them. Here's a squash. I believe it's a squash. Bunch of little fruits on them. If we come back over here by the butternut in between these very active uh, African blue basils. Lots of bees on them. But over here, we have a little pumpkin. This is the Jackie Little Pumpkins. I believe you can eat them, but I just wanted to grow them because it was called Jackie Little. So far, that this would be my second one to harvest. Oh look, the top might not be doing so good, but the bottom of the butternut is doing good, so. It's happy. That's, that makes me happy. You guys have tons of African blue basil planted all throughout the yard. The bees love it. So it's definitely helping with all my pollination. Over here I have a soursop tree. I don't know how much it likes being over here because it, it kind of grows, but then it gets all these burnt leaves. I don't know if it's from the neighbor's sprinklers because I think they go off in the middle of the day or if it's just like holding water or what. I have no idea. It looks like a water damage issue. Like that. It's just all knocked over. I need to cut these back and uh, repot them. Have some plants to sell at the farmer's market. But here's the white giant milkweed. The leaves are huge. The leaves are very sturdy. There's absolutely no damage on any of these leaves yet so I guess monarchs have not been out and about 
Don't know what's going on over there in Mexico. First Mexican sunflower. Here's basil over there. I did plant a Kiko's crump over here and over there. A little slow to grow, but it's growing and that's what counts. I do have two, two rows of mulberries growing. These are all the same age. These are all cuttings from a 100 year old mulberry tree. This seems to be the only one that's really, really loving it, but that's okay. I can always plant more, plant something else. I'll probably just plant more mulberries. I really want them over here. This pigeon pea is loving it. Basils, of course. I do have a kale right there, keep forgetting about. I figured I'd just let it grow and then let it go to seed and just let it reseed itself. Next in sunflower. Underneath here, we have two mullein plants. I guess they really like the shade. This is a toilet paper plant. Smells really nice. Yes, you can wipe your butt with it. It's very fuzzy, it's firm, and it has essential oils. This is Okinawan spinach. It's also another plant that would prefer the shade, so that's another one on the list to plant somewhere else. More mulberries, more basil. If we look over here at this beautiful moringa tree, no idea why this one's doing much better than others but it's awesome. And has one trunk, two main leading trunks there. This is also known as the miracle tree or tree of life. And then you would just uh, eat the leaves. You can dry them, put them in smoothies. It's kind of a strong flavor. Try out. Starting to sprout a bunch underneath there. Kind of hard to see. But um, it's alive. That's all that matters. This here is called the Rose of Sharon. This is a type of hibiscus. You can make teas with the flowers. Colorful pigments are good for you. We have a chaya down here. I put this cabbage here. Um, I planted this, I don't know, earlier this year at the other house. And I just, I don't know, it's not dying. Maybe it should be in full sun, but it's just chilling. Next to this chaya. Here we have Tonga. I'm pretty sure this is also an Abel Mastis Manny Hot, but this is another edible leaf hibiscus. I don't know how big that is. You can eat them raw or you can stir fry the leaves. Over here is a beautiful patch of sunshine mimosa planted on uh, planted around this. Uh, coconut cream mango, which is finally sprouting some new leaves, sprouting, pushing, flushing, whatever. I thought maybe this one was also having too much nitrogen, which it probably is. But this patch of sunshine mimosa is the biggest one I had. I planted this when the coconut cream mango was in a pot, and it's just been doing its thing. Got a couple flowers. This is the host plant for the little sulfur butterfly. But so far, my host plants don't seem to be hosting anybody. So I don't know what's going on this year with butterflies. Of course, I have another Chief Kubo's Pride over there. And here we have a pink guava. Uh, mother says it dies back every year. This one is a more tropical tree. And I don't know if the growth is because I'm here giving it some love with these wood chips or what, but it seems to be doing good. No, no flowers or anything yet. And right behind me, we have this trailing mass of a seminal pumpkin. I have a seminal pumpkin patch here. It's interesting because one of them has kind of like a variegated leaf. This one here has this interesting variegation here. I thought it was just the plant and how it is, but it doesn't really seem like any of the other ones are like that. But I do finally have pumpkins coming up. Look at this. 
This is an Able Moss, not Able Mosses. This is a Tithonia diversifolia. I guess it got too top heavy and it fell over. Uh, I really should just cut it up and take cuttings from it. Leaning over on my patch of pumpkins. <sighs> Make sure, oh, there's a couple pumpkins underneath. I mean, who knows? The pumpkins could have pulled it down too. But there's one. There's one. There's one. And these are all from seed. I had bought two seminal pumpkins from a lady at the farmer's market. Opened them up and planted the seeds. Now we have all these, all these plants coming out. That is the remainder of my corn patch. I really need to plant out the corn again while we still have time. I did harvest a few ears of corn. I don't know if they were fully developed or what. Oh, we got more pumpkins, so there's a lot now. And once they start popping up, they will not stop. Uh, these tall grass-like things here are sugarcane. This is a red sugarcane I ordered um, cuttings from eBay. That's what those two are. Then these two right here is the uh, it's a dwarf wine variety called Hilo Buddha. The only two that survived, and oh, there's a new shoot coming up. So I'm really hoping that grows a lot over the next few months so I can take more cuttings, bring them inside, and overwinter them. This red kind over here is a Florida native, but it is more from central Florida. So I don't know how well it's gonna do in the winter, but I'm just gonna leave them. I will take some cuttings from there if they get big enough and overwinter those as well. Corn patch. I do have these uh, pigeon peas planted throughout, which I will replant probably in the middle of the watermelon patch. Mother planted some uh, bitter melon over there. You kind of see one right there. Here we have some corns. Probably not developed at all, but it, the tip is brown, so let's see what we got. Pretty. Look at that. That's really pretty. Probably just dry these or plant the whole thing. Watch it grow. Let's see, I've got a couple of other ones over here. Let's see if any of these develop kernels. This one feels like it did. So we're just gonna pluck it off. This one's really pretty. I believe this is the glass gem corn variety. And of course, I will just save the seeds and plant them. Usually you wanna save seeds from your best plants, but these are the only ones that I really have. And I do have more seeds as well. So once I redo this whole area, I'll make it into a much better corn patch. All right, so here's a couple other corns that I picked up. Let's open them up and see what we've got. Well, I definitely was not expecting much of anything. This one's like kind of old and gross. This one's got a few on it. This one's got like two big ones. I can't really tell if that's supposed to be glass gem corn or if it's supposed to be the black or blue corn. I believe this one's supposed to be glass gem because of that white one there. So these are probably the same. And then this one didn't have anything. So these were the bestest ones. All right, right here what I'm stepping on is the septic tank. And uh, it's usually nice and green, but I had cut back all of the weeds that were as tall as me here. I do want to mulch it up just to prevent more grass from growing. Not really supposed to grow on the septic tank because of the weight. But uh, I may or may not put some cut flowers there. Over in the back corner, we've got some white ube that I really need to harvest. another angle of the sweet potato patch. Look at that! So 
sweet potatoes are part of the Morning Glory family. I have no idea why they flower. I can't find much information on the web, but I'm just gonna let it hang out and be pretty. I have six or seven different kinds of sweet potatoes in here. Oh yeah, let's find that tomato hornworm I saw. I'm gonna pluck it off and throw it to the birds. I'll love it. It was on here. And it was crazy looking. There you are. Look at that guy. Look at how look at how large he is. I'm just been chomping away at my plants. Which I guess is kind of okay in the sense that it'll fertilize it with its poop, but it will also destroy the entire plant. So I don't know. I don't know. Are you gonna bite me, little guy? Oh god. Oh god. You and your weird mouth. Ugh. Look at him. Definitely going to throw him way over here. That way the birds will find him or some type of lizard. There we go. Throw him into my pile. Let someone else get you, buddy. Look at this, it's little sweet potatoes. I don't even know how it got here or what potatoes they are. I don't know. That's very random. Very random indeed. Look, we have a little tomato. A couple more little tomatoes. All right, well, it's starting to get really windy out here. It's supposed to be raining the next few days. So all of these plants will be well taken care of. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Plant Life 850. And I will catch you guys next time.